everybody's got an opinion. Every Californian and Virginian. It's so hard to tell who to trust and who to ignore. Someone's got to settle the score. Trey and Chelsea will help you choose. Whose views win? Which ones lose? Online haters are coming for you. Baby, it's time to review the review. Hello. Hello, welcome to Review That Review. The um, intro song is always my warm up. Like, you know, when you go to the gym and they have like, or you're going to like a workout class and they have that initial song where you're just like getting things started. That's what our theme song does for me. I hope, I hope it energizes the audience. I wonder if the audience skips it because they're just so <laughs> eager to get to us or if Natalie's vocals to Joe Canozian's tunes are actually what they're coming for each week. I mean, I will say it was at a friend's house last night and she was singing our theme song. It was like very trippy. She like couldn't wait. Sing. Really? I swear she couldn't stop singing the theme song. And I was like, oh, my God, it gets stuck in other people's heads besides mine. So maybe we should apologize to Rice Aroni. No, that's not happening. But <laughs> I do think like we are so lucky because yes, we're just so lucky. Should we say what we what we are? Oh yeah. I mean, if you're if you're listening this far, maybe you already know. But just in case, we do though have written transcriptions of each episode for listeners that are hard of hearing or that prefer to consume podcasts via reading. Yeah. So let's just say it. Yeah. For the fun of it. Sure. Do you want to wait? Do you want to say it together? I want to see how it goes. I think it will go badly, but we can try. Okay, you ready? Okay, sure. One, two, three. Welcome, Welcome to, to review, review that, that review. review. The, the podcast. podcast You're trying to be bad. I'm not. I'm trying to be good. Oh. Welcome to Review That Review, the podcast dedicated to reviewing reviews. We're just like Siskel and Ebert, only instead of reviewing cinematic masterpieces, we rate and review those hilarious, scathing, and sometimes suspicious online reviews. That's Chelsea Dawn. Yeah, and that's Trey Gerald. And together, we're the Review Queens. <laughs> How's your crown today, Chelsea? You are Q-U. Oh, RQ. I like that. Yeah, you are QU. Um, my crown is great. It's virtual today, so it's quite light, which I appreciate. I feel very good. How have you been? How's your week been, Trey? I'm good. My crown's also virtual. Oh, other <laughs> side. Um, good. I'm good. It was a little rainy today, which was a little unexpected. I'm so in this habit now of going on a, a daily walk, sometimes two with the two dogs. Mm. And, you know, it, it's a process of getting the two dogs and their harnesses. And then I have this tandem leech. So it's like the two dogs. And so it's, it, it is an event. It's not a bad thing, but it's an event. And then we get outside and then David wanted to join and our nephew Denver is staying. So then he was going to come. And then it was, then we literally walked, this is not even an exaggeration. We walked maybe five steps and it started like, it was like, oh, I think it's spitting. And then it was like, oh no yeah, it was crazy so we ran back so did you get caught or did you even, were you able to get home no we were like so close to the garage like we were still in the driveway that it was sort of like uh we'll just go and stand in the garage but then it did sort of stop a little bit and david walked around with an, an umbrella and i just sort of took the rain it was fun how about you i'm good i have this random pain sometimes in my I know it's weird in my pointer finger on my left hand if there are any doctors listening that have any advice for me do let me know but I get this weird pain and so I had this like throbbing pain in this finger all night so I, I didn't get the best night's sleep last night but I did have Pilates before this and we did some like neck work and that kind of made it a little bit better, oddly enough. That is so wild. The body is so weird how everything is connected. Yeah, it's bizarre. But Jenny, watch that rock Pilates. I mean, she knows what she's doing. So thank God for her because, I mean, this pain is no joke. She said you got a problem in your finger. Let's move that neck. Let's move that neck. <laughs> well, besides the um, pain in your finger, yeah. is there any complaint you want to lodge? Lodge a complaint. Yes. I would like to lodge a complaint against cell phones. Like, you know, when you have full bars, like you look at your phone, you're like, 
I got full bars and yet you can't look anything up and like your phone's all choppy. And then you're like, I have full bars. And then your friend's like, I also have full bars. Do the bars even mean anything anymore? It's really annoying. Does the friend have the same? No, different service provider. Right. You know, does this happen to you? It's odd that you're saying that because I do find that I will frequently switch my eye. Well, not my iPad. When I purchased my iPad, this is a tangent. I was duped into getting it a cell plan, which I, I didn't oh. comprehend what was happening. Sure. And then I did when I got my bill and I was like, what the fuck? And then I called and was like, wait, did what happened? And they're like, yeah, that's correct. And I was like, oh, but I it, can I have it without that? And they're like, that's the plan you chose. And I was like, <laughs> so I just felt stupid and I hung up. Yeah. And then like later I was like, I have to cancel this tangent. Okay. Um, yes. I do have to flip my cell phone a lot back from like, I take, turn the Wi-Fi off and then I turn yeah. the Wi-Fi back on. I'll put an airplane, not yes. airplane. Same. And some t- how that will trigger better service, but I Sometimes. have to like do that for a couple of seconds. It's very weird. It is very weird. It doesn't really make any sense to me. I don't know what the bars are supposed to mean. Like I thought I could trust the bars, you know, like right now I have two bars and I live in the Hills and we have really bad service here. So that feels Mm. accurate to me and that's okay. Like I'm cool. If you want to let me know that I don't always have full service, but don't lie to me. It's hurtful. I hear that so hard. What's the first visual when you hear the word B-A-R-S? jail oh see i think of like a candy bar oh god what does that say about us <laughs> but i also well, like when you were saying bars i then thought about like a bar like oh, going or a bar. out to a bar wow i think that i felt maybe i felt bars like jail bars because i feel imprisoned by you know wireless these companies wireless companies and the fact that i'm stuck with them and they're lying to me <laughs> you know david has verizon and i still have at&t yes And that is a very interesting dynamic for a spouse to have a different wireless company because we often, Verizon tends to always have better service than AT&T anywhere we go. But the good thing about that is that if one of us doesn't have service, odds are the other one will. And that's really fantastic. That is nice. I think that's helpful. I actually think it's helpful to have an inter-wireless or inter-network relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I approve. That's the that's the key to marriage. That is the key to marriage. I mean, weirdly enough, you would be great here. AT&T service at my house is excellent. Verizon is no good. So maybe we should just do a swap. Okay, that that's fine with me. Seems like a realistic solution. <laughs> anyway, what is your complaint? Do you have a complaint to lodge? Yeah, I have a couple of complaints to lodge. Okay. The one that's the most pressing I'm choosing to not do because it's so basic and it's been covered a lot. <laughs> the roof of my mouth was burned today by a hot pocket, oh my God. but I'm not going to go into that because it's just everyone knows and it's like enough. I think we should go into but, it, but sure. Well, I just feel like it's like okay. such an- This is your cathartic moment. So pick, <laughs> pick the complaint you want to lodge. I want to lodge a complaint against taking group photos. Mm, okay. Okay, now this is something that really gets me. And I know that I am married to a professional photographer, so I need to just choose my bliss and get over it. (laughs) Yeah. It's something that has come up a lot in our relationship because my husband, you know, pre-pandemic, wanted to take a picture underneath every Broadway marquee, like anytime we saw a show. And we were very fortunate that that's like an activity that we really consume a lot. So we would go to a lot of Broadway shows. And I am a person that I perpetually feel like I'm running late. And so I'm always in a rush. Mm -hmm. And then I want to like go in and I want to like sit down. I want to read the playbill. Anyway, that has come up a lot. But when we're in group settings and it's like, let's commemorate this uh, moment by taking a photograph everyone get together well we're not in like a photo development phase anymore everyone has a smartphone everyone's having a side conversation no one is ready to stand together and then take a picture and then some aunt is always going to have her eyes closed (laughs) or there's some family member that suddenly has disappeared and they've gone to the bathroom and everyone's like wait where are you oh we can't oh we we gotta wait everyone wait everyone and that's like let's get the waiter over here to take a picture and then it's like the waiter has 17 tables and they don't want to take your stupid picture and it's like, or you get someone that like doesn't know how to use the phone. And then it's like, oh no, this is an Android. I don't have an Android, but it's like, oh, this is an Android. No, you have to do this. Oh wait, can you do a flash? It's like, I don't know how to work the phone. And then you have to like go over and you tell, and then everyone's like, oh wait, are my eyes closed? Oh, I don't like my, everyone has to look at the picture. And then a week later, 
And then we haven't even gotten to the Jewish goodbyes yet. It's like, then it's 25 minutes before we complete taking this photograph. And then someone's not happy with the picture because Always. it's a group. It so just you don't really... even end up using the photo. Well, no one uses the photos anyway. Right. It's like, they just like sit Marie Kondo digital clutter. Like no one is seeing these pictures. Yeah. But I do recognize that it is really nice to go back and see images and from a long time ago. And I, I recognize the value. It just, it's like back in the days, you took a picture, it went to the photo lab, you waited a one week, they photo. developed it. One hour photo. Oh my God, one hour photo. Yeah. And then you would get whatever the picture was, was. Yeah. But now we're also in this whole digital age of face tuning and beauty app and making everyone look pretty. And so no one thinks they look pretty because we're not used to seeing actual humans anymore. We're Correct. seeing like fake blurred out skin yeah. people. Oh, it's just a vicious circle. Oh, <sighs> I feel you. I think it's so funny, actually, to me that you brought this up because I went out to a late birthday dinner. I was like very stressed because I was running late. And then I got there and this woman was like, would you mind taking a picture of me and my whole family? And I just, you know, she's like, you look like you know how to take a good picture. And I'm like, well, that's an accurate assumption. So I I felt like, yeah, let me help them out. And like, that is the danger right there. Just the person saying that, but her saying, oh, you're going to be good at this. It's already like, you're going to be too much work for me. Sorry, I interrupted you. It was so much work and there were kids in the photos. So they weren't Uh, looking. And it's just funny to me that you brought that up because that literally just happened to me. So accurate. And then also I I do recognize that like, family matters and like we want documentation because it feels good that was why I stepped up even though I was late because I was like yes I am good at taking these photos and like I can imagine you might get a terrible photo so like allow me to give you this experience but it did go on a little bit longer than I had anticipated I'm amazed that we just talked about (laughs) photos for so long I mean (laughs) it actually this this is really becoming an enjoyable segment for me because these common annoyances yeah are pretty universal and so like there is something freeing about like sharing it and then there's commiserating about it and then it's like well whatever you know yeah oh it's great sometimes you need to kvetch and with that in mind sorry I just (laughs) no I just I just got um the lozenge. Chelsea sent me a care package, black currant, sugar-free, Grether's pastel, pastilles. Yeah, pastilles. I, pastilles. I don't know. It's French, I think. I remember my voice teacher in college always had these. Yeah, they're so good. So I, I was them. popping one in my mouth because I wanted <laughs> to be able to like say thank you for the gift. And then Aww. you were like teeing me up so beautifully. It's okay. Wow. 18 well, minutes in and here we are. Okay. I would be remiss, Uh um, not right before we started to just point out to the audience who can't see what I can see, that Trey is like serving us sexy, where's Waldo today? This is from our photo shoot. I know, but it's like in just the red and white stripe. I don't know. You're serving me Waldo. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to wear my glasses. I just, yeah, if you had the glasses, you would be, oh my God, yes. Mm. Like Trey, you know, like when you go on the internet and you see those Halloween costumes that are adapted to be all hipstery, like Trey looks like a hipster, adorable, where's Waldo? I went as a where's Waldo before. Did you wear that shirt? I wore like the actual like expensive where's Waldo costume shirt. There you go. Anyway. It It came with a beanie that was really cute. I don't know where that went. Okay. Anyway, whatever. Anyway, but you have a crown instead. Mm-hmm. All right. That was a tangent. Let's get into assess that kvetch. All right. Who's going first? Today? I think you're going first today. Did I go first last time? It is I, the gay review queen. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. Hit it, sister. <laughs> review that review. Okay. Uh, my review today is a one dot review. From okay. TripAdvisor. This is on a list. It is number 102 of 318 things to do in Honolulu. Oh. And it is from Lisa. And the review subject is shopping at Ross Dress for Less in Glen Allen, Virginia. So it has nothing to do with Honolulu. What? Mm-hmm. I'm okay. so confused. So wait, hold on. This you found this 
on a list of things to do in Honolulu. But what we actually discovered was a review for the Ross in Virginia, Virginia, because Lisa wrote the review under this under the Honolulu Ross dress for less. Hey, Lisa. Okay. (laughs) Already, Already starting off on an interesting foot. All right. Let's hear from Lisa. Okay. I experienced a first this evening. While traveling, we stopped at Ross Dress for Less in Glen Allen, Virginia. I had found an item of clothing in another Ross store in another city, but needed a larger size, so stopped when I found this Ross. It was 7.30 p.m., and the store didn't close until 10 p.m. As I shopped, I was pleased to find what I was seeking, as well as several other items, and wanted to try them on. Here's the shocker. I was told all dressing rooms are closed after 7.30, so I couldn't try them on. Are you kidding me? A clothing store that doesn't allow you to try them on before purchase? If you're perhaps having security issues, hire a security guard. If you can't do that, then you should close the store the minute you close the dressing rooms. I had several items I chose not to purchase when I found this out. I even quite shopping altogether. I proceeded to the checkout with only the item I had found in the larger size from trying it on at another Ross in another city. The register was being run by the person I was told was the manager. There was one woman with two small children in front of me. I waited for her to decide what she was purchasing and deliberate for several minutes over whether or not she wanted to spend more and also get a toy her kids were begging her for. At this point, I was becoming rather agitated since we had a long drive still ahead of us. The manager couldn't get the woman's card to run through and kept apologizing After at least 10 more minutes, she announced she would have to void the entire purchase and ring everything up again. She apologized to me for having to wait, at which time I expressed my concerns and shock at their policy. She told me she had expressed comments to the manager, but he wouldn't let her keep the dressing rooms open later. I stated that he then needed to be on site dealing with angry customers. Furthermore, I informed her I was told she was the manager, a comment to which she reluctantly admitted, appearing stunned that I caught her and called her out on it. After waiting several more minutes for the transaction still to be completed for the customer in front of me, I politely asked if I could leave my item there, and I walked out. This store lost all of my business this evening, and I can assure you I will never stop here again when next I travel this way. Furthermore, everyone I know will hear this story. In my opinion, there are enough Rosses in the Richmond, Virginia, that if you can't provide appropriate customer service, permanently shut the store down completely. I've never been so appalled in my life. And I've shopped at many a Ross store in many states as I've traveled. Very disappointed and amazed this store is allowed to operate this way. Wow. Oh my God, Lisa. Lisa, like, I feel like I need like a, a fire extinguisher or something to put her out. She was really fired up there. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts here. There are a bunch of like very like random misspellings. Everyone will hear about this. It's spelled H E R E. There's a bunch of I's that are not capitalized. Mm. Also, I do recognize the validity of complaining that. What's the point in shopping for clothes if you can't try them on? But I will say that everyone knows that Ross and TJ Maxx, all these stores, they have so much like tchotchke stuff. Right. All of the stuff in the line going to check out is like gadgets and gizmos aplenty. So you don't have to try them on. (laughs) Right. Anyway. Okay. I've talked a lot. Tell me what you're thinking, Chels. So many thoughts. Like, first of all, I I feel like I need to put aside that she reviewed this under the wrong category because that's going to distract me now. But I do have a question. Like, 
when so I put this on this list of Honolulu things, mm-hmm. does it then queue in to the Ross in Virginia's like list of reviews? It does not. No, this is All for right, the well, Honolulu like, location. Okay, well then, therefore, this re- review is like completely useless. Would this um, impact my ability to, or my willingness to shop at this Ross, et cetera? Like, I feel like I can't even bring that into play. However, there, I, I have thoughts. All right, where are we traveling to? It was like while traveling. Like, so, like, are we traveling to Honolulu? Maybe I don't think we can drive there. I have no idea. But we're clearly traveling. What I was shocked at was when she, first of all, she informs us later that she's an avid Ross shopper. But when she first starts talking, she's like, oh, and then we were going to go to another Ross to get a larger size of the same item. I was thinking, that's a gamble, honey, because aren't the Ross, they, they operate in kind of independently. So it's like what you find at one Ross you're not going to necessarily find it in another, right? Yeah. When I read that at the beginning, I was like, oh my God, that's a magic trick that right? the, the same thing was there. Yeah. How do you feel about the dressing room closing at 730 as a policy? It does sound to me that perhaps this Ross was understaffed. If the manager is running the register, there's no reason to shut it down, right? I mean, the only thing that I was thinking, they, they close at 8? 10. Oh, they close at 10? Yep, oh, then that's ridiculous. Okay, that's crazy. Yes, two and a half hours early. All right, so I'll give Lisa that. Like, that's an insane policy. In my mind, I was like, okay, well, if they close at eight, maybe it's just that, like, if we let people into the fitting room at 730 and then they're, like, in there a really long time and right. trying on different things, then it's like, maybe you have somebody in the fitting room until nine o'clock and you're like, we closed an hour ago, you know? So I was sort of giving them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, but if it was truly 730, 10 p.m., that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Did she say that this made her quit shopping altogether? Was that, like a declarative statement like and I no longer shop or that just made her quit shopping at the Ross well she says that she'll never shop here again when next I travel this way no but before that earlier in the review she said something like I think she said I quite shopping altogether but I think she meant I quit shopping altogether yes that's right Right. Lisa realized they could no longer. They couldn't try things on. So she was just like, I'm not going to buy anything. Because at first I was like, are you being dramatic? Like, and I quit shopping. All <laughs> I mean, she knew so many details about this other woman that was checking out. First of all, it sounds like that other woman was in the middle of a nightmare. And Lisa had like no empathy for what was happening. Right. With that woman, like the card reader wasn't working. She's dealing with the kids that want she to thing children. And- yeah. That are like screaming and like, I want this mommy. I want, you know, and that's like a nightmare. Like, it sounds like that woman was having a nightmare as well, but there was just so much anger. What do you think about engaging with the cashier while you're behind the person that's actually being checked out at that moment? I mean, that's a pet peeve like that, Ooh. like. Listen, like, I don't know, like Lisa is obviously making it sound like she was there for like hours and she's in the middle of the road trip and they're like, her family's like waiting outside for her. So she's very anxious clearly to get out of here. I don't know. Like, it just seems, I got so many Karen vibes. Like we need to get that manager sound cue because like, I just wanted to like push that sound cue every time you said manager, like she said manager like three or four times. And I just like that she was painting the picture like she she was doing everything perfectly and everybody else was doing everything terribly wrong. Like even when she left, she was like, I politely asked if I could leave the item here. Like she really wanted us to know that she wasn't going out in a huff and like throwing the thing on the floor. Like she was like, I politely, gently graced my item on top of, you know what I mean? Like as if she's just the most delicate person ever. I don't know. It's a little bit of like a low blow thing to be like, and I'm going to let everyone that I know, know that they should never shop here ever. You know, like, it's just, it feels, it does feel very karen Was she attacking Ross or was she just attacking the store? Like, was she saying that Ross, the store should go out of business or just this location? Just that one because okay. permanently shut this store down completely is in all caps. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I am curious how Lisa ended up at this Honolulu location, leaving a review for a location in Virginia. That's so perplexing to me. Yeah. And Lisa has contributed 13 other reviews to TripAdvisor. Did she filter those appropriately? I did not go on a scavenger hunt, <laughs> but that would be fun, actually. There were some spelling grammar issues, like I was saying. It's, they were sort of sprinkled in here and there. It, it, it's that thing that we come across where it seems like they were in a fit of rage and just like, had no time to think if they were saying here or here. Right. <laughs> but I think it's odd that they are closing the dressing room two yes. and a half hours early. But yes. that sort of gets buried it because does. your point about the mom, like Lisa is so wrapped up in the drama happening to them right. that they feel as though this mother who's trying to please the child but not spend too much money and then the drama of the checkout person not being able to get the card to run. Right. Lisa feels like it's happening to her or exactly. to them and not taking into account that like this other woman also couldn't go into the fitting room. This other woman also. Is well, this woman is trying to check out and the card reader is not working and the children right. are crying because they want things. And now you're interjecting about being upset right. about you're saying you're not the manager, but I know you're the manager. And the mom is just trying to leave because she's got to go to Burger King to feed her kids. Right. I'm imagining. Yeah. So that makes me feel a little like, oh, like uh, if we're off on a tangent at this point. Like, is it about right. The dressing room being closed or, or is, is it about, about you're just like pissed that like life is handing you lemons it's also it's so interesting to me to stop in the middle of a road trip to like go shopping but lisa needed to do that I yeah guess. same i mean i will say in terms of entertainment value i don't know if it was just that like you did such a good job with your reading but i like laughed when she wrote here's the shocker you know like it was like you know i don't know i thought that was funny I feel like I could crown this. I can crown it. I'm ready. All right. The queens are tabulating. So as you know, Chelsea and I each have our own set of one to five crown cards. And in an effort to not be influenced by one another, we are going to reveal them simultaneously so that we aren't influenced by one another. You ready, Chelsea? I am ready. Total score. <gasps> Okay, unanimous. We're, we're both one crown. Hold, yeah, we're each holding up one crown. This was like the easiest crowning ever. I mean, I don't know. I gave her one crown because I thought like that was ridiculous that they closed at 730. But like I couldn't give her any other crowns because this this review is essentially useless. Well, that's why I did one crown because I wanted to do half a crown on its own. Yeah. But I did think it was entertaining that it was under the wrong store. Right. But then, like you said, it is obnoxious. They closed the dressing room two and a half hours before close when this is a clothing yeah. store. Um, right. So that's just like <laughs> insane. It, there's no impact. I, I do think it's funny. So that's why I did one crowd. Yes. All okay. right. So we did it, Lisa. Thank you so much. Yes. Thanks, Lisa, for, for putting this out into the wrong list. And I hope you have a great time frequenting the Richmond, Virginia Rosses that are so much better. Yes, please go to those because this one sounds terrible. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll see how Meryl's tan looks before getting into my review. Oh, I love that. Gosh, I'm so jealous she was on the Caribbean. I know. She needs a vacay. BRB. Bye. Hold your crown. We'll be right back. Hey, queens, we know it can get so annoying to constantly be asked to rate and review. We get it. Obviously, our show is all about reviews, but we're asking because it's important to us to know what you're thinking of the show. What do you love? What do you want less of? Let us know. We've made it super easy with this cute little link, lovethepodcast.com slash the review queens. It's one click away in the show description below. Who knows? Maybe yours will be selected as a royal review in an upcoming episode. Thanks in advance. And now, back to the show. Wow, 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 wow. 
Oh, it's game time again. Meryl's back, and we're going to take a quick spin on the Meryl go round. Chelsea, you better hop on that dolphin. Oh, I love dolphins. Good call. That was great. <laughs> Isn't that what they make? Yeah. I mean, they also communicate, I think, in another level. Blowhole. What Whoa. am I on? Oh, God. You, I think, I don't know why I see you on like a duck. I just think like Waldo <sighs> on a duck, like a oh. flying duck. Ducks are so cute. We, yeah. we used to go on nature walks in elementary school and we would feed ducks bread. And one time I got swarmed by a bunch of ducks and I threw the bag and I started crying. Oh no. It can be overwhelming if they all attack at once. It's like, can be so scary. <laughs> I don't feel like an icon. Most of the days I feel like I can't. That's with an A. With an A. All right, here's the deal. Trey and I each read a rotten, scathing, pithy one-star zinger with 30 seconds on the clock. We will try to recite the zinger in as many genres as possible. Just like Queen Meryl, who does it all. Before the clock runs out. Okay, so my review is from Walmart, and it is reviewing a bamboo wooden back scratcher that Mm. can also be a shoehorn. And... (laughs) It's uh, one star, obviously, and it says made very cheap and paper thin. That's really okay. thin. I just have to say. Yeah. Paper thin is that's thin. Okay. You strapped in. You ready? Oh, uh, get my seatbelt on. Yeah. Here we go. I'm ready. Three, two, one. Superhero. Go! Made very cheap and paper thin. WWE. Made very cheap and paper thin. Magic show. Made very cheap and paper thin. Slapstick. Oh, made very cheap and paper thin. <laughs> Courtroom drama. Made very cheap and paper thin. Three. Horror. Two, one. Paper. That's all. Good job, Charles. What do we do? Five. One, two, three, four, five. That was okay. a lot of pressure. Hey, guess what? Yes. None of this matters. It's true. It's, just, it's just for fun. Today, I have a one-star zinger from the very cool website called Fiverr. Mm, we've and used them is, a few times. We, we <laughs> used them. A, we, we hired three separate people for our logo, and none of them were up to snuff. They were very nice people. So this is for a skill called, I will write impressive personal statements and application letters. And this is a wow. one-star review from Mimi B75. Okay. And Mimi B75 says, seller is horrible. Oh, okay. Mimi didn't have that much to say, but whatever. Good point. Are All you right. ready? I'm quacking and I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Three, two, one. TLC. My sailor is horrible. <laughs> Rom-com. Oh, that uh, seller, he's horrible. Melodrama. That seller is horrible. Courtroom drama. That seller is horrible. TLC. Uh, Oh, that seller is horrible, Duck Dynasty. (laughs) Magic show. Ooh, that seller's horrible. (laughs) I made a sound effect. Did I call TLC twice? Yeah. Which is fine. Which is fine. Woo. Oh my gosh. Wow, Trey. That How many? Was six. You Aww. did amazing. You won. You're our big winner. I'm curtsying because I'm a queen. And you either got TLC twice and you delivered two different readings. <gasps> well, wow. I was channeling Teen Mom too, and then I was channeling Duck Dynasty. I thought Teen Mom 2 was like on oh, MTV. You're... Oh no. Should, Should I, I take a away a take point? Away? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You were great. You were great. Thank you. Review that review. All righty. We are back from that rousing game break and it's my turn, I guess. Yay. Mine is a one star Google review written by all we're getting here is the initial K. It is a one-star review of the Medieval Times Dinner and Tournament in Buena Park, California. (laughs) All right. Are we ready? I'm ready, yeah. Firstly, I want to say I am a woman. 
I was so disappointed in medieval times when I just recently went. First off, they replaced the spare rib with corn. And the apple cake is now lemon pound cake? Disgusting. What a letdown. And I don't mind that they have a queen, but it's so obviously a politically correct hashtag Me Too movement. I will not be going again until the show changes. Where is the Black Knight? Where is the executioner? And the wizard? The bad knight is simply a bad knight because he makes some comments against women. And then all the people who were assigned that night have to awkwardly not cheer now because they're knight if the realm is suddenly an evil misogynist. No. Bring back the Black Knight. This new show is not entertaining at all and is just a ploy at gender equality, to which point it's no longer interesting or good. What a disappointment all around. This is supposed to be medieval times, not modern social justice warrior times. Oh, dear. Ugh, I have to point out there were so many grammatical errors in that. Half the time, I didn't even know what I was reading, but I feel like we just need to point that out for the listener. That was What crazy. year was that written? This was written two years ago. Okay, so interesting choice, Chelsea, because Thanks. there is a medieval times in Myrtle Beach, and I went to school and college in Myrtle Beach, and a very good friend, actually multiple friends of mine worked there. Okay. To my recollection, I thought it was a princess, not a queen. <laughs> you know, this is like more than 15 years ago when I was in college. Is that true? Oh my God. Don't say such things. <laughs> but I knew, like, I know the girl who was the princess and she's younger than I am. So right. I, I don't know what that's about. I, I think I did go on a school trip as a kid and I, my memory is that it was a king. So I think, yeah. I think the royalty changes. Like, I think that is in flux regardless. I don't know. I cannot speak for medieval times, but it is hilarious to me that they replaced a spare rib with corn. I know. I how, know. How were those equivalent? Like in the same tier? That was like when I started to get excited about this review because I was like, oh my God, this is going to be hilarious. But like, I mean, she kind of lost it after that. Yeah, they also replaced the apple cake with, with lemon pound cake. But like my biggest question is how many times did Kay go to medieval times? Mm. Because it seems like Kay must frequent this place she knows the menu like the back of her hand enough that she's like very disappointed that it's not it, you know it's like somebody who does something over and over and over and over and over again and it's the same way every time and you just come to expect that thing and then you come one time and things are different and you're just like whoa what happened to this thing that I've come to rely on and k must just go to this medieval times all the time, which is so funny to me. I went once. I think of medieval times as being like a bucket list item. Like you check it off. I've been there once. I don't need to go back. But K must go there all the time. I'm confused about the whole Black Knight thing. They, they, yeah. so there's no longer, I, my memory was like everyone sits in a certain section and you're yes. that color of the knight yeah. that the horse is wearing. And there was like a Black Knight that was the villain. Right. Is Kay suggesting they change that for like racial equality? I think what Kay is saying or is, is that Kay it, mostly mad about gender equality? I don't know. Like it, it is. I'll give you it is confusing because it feels like there's two things going on. First, I thought it was that she was upset that they like replaced the Black Knight with the queen. Right. Because it's like oh. we need to have more female characters. Oh, like there's a female on the horse. I guess oh, that would be so fierce. Right. So I guess, so that's what I was thinking is that like, oh, it's going to be oh. a, like this character is going to be a queen now instead of being. But why would the a, queen be writing? Wouldn't it be like a peasant or something like? I don't know. Like, I don't I don't I, I don't know the narrative of <laughs> of the medieval times show well enough to dissect that part of it. You can't be the dramaturg for medieval times. Unfortunately, I'm not equipped to be the dramaturg for medieval times as much as I would love to be. She also mentioned basically the Black Knight is cut 
Okay, well, I then, literally just went to the website and the first yeah. image is the Black Knight fighting a Green Knight. Okay, so I don't know. But in this production, maybe the part of the Black Knight was being played by the Queen. I, like, I don't know. That was what I thought. Wait, I see. They It's it's now checkered. So it's a the Black and White Knight. Uh, the Green oh. Knight, the Yellow Knight, the Red Knight, the Red and Yellow Knight, the Blue Knight. Although the blue looks purple, but whatever. Okay. Clashing their way to Queen's champion. Okay, there's no images of a female. This was in California? Yeah, this was in Buena Park, California. But there's a couple things. So I don't mind that they have a queen, but it's so obviously a politically correct Me Too movement now that I will not be going. Yeah, like, I don't understand what they mean. Like, so they added a queen, but then the where is the Black Knight? So the Black Knight's gone. The executioner is gone and the wizard is gone. <laughs> oh, there was like a wizard person. Yeah. So they're saying basically they they did a rewrite of this medieval time show. And Kay is really upset about that rewrite. She did not like it one bit. I'm curious. I wonder how many rewrites have happened in history prior to this. Like, I wonder how long medieval times has been around and how frequently they switch up the script. You know, I I, am, I just want to share this because it keeps coming up for me. And Myrtle yeah. Beach, right next door to medieval times was the Dolly Parton's Dixie Stampede. And they were kind of, sem- they're not, similar but it's like an arena and they serve food and they're like both like times and history or whatever and Dolly Parton famously removed the word Dixie because people were offended by it right and she has this beautiful statement that's like nothing is worth someone being offended if one human being has the fleeting thought that it's offensive I'm taking the word out end of conversation good for medieval times trying to like show representation for little girls if that is what's occurring here i I recognize that k can feel threatened well k is a female i recognize that k may not want to see that because maybe that isn't historically accurate for the medieval times that's what it it, yes it feels like like Kay considers herself quite an expert at this time and she's suggesting that regardless of whether or not it's right or wrong that we're somehow ruining the the diorama of of this medieval time period in exchange for a more like modern take on the story but what i i mean listen kate didn't give me any information that's valuable here as far as i'm concerned because she didn't say what the what what is the new show like what's so bad about it all like i'm confused i know what we took away but I don't know what it is that we are seeing. Like, are we cheering for a queen instead of a black knight? Like, what is it that I can come to expect? Well, you can come to expect there's no more spare rib. Yeah, I can come to expect. Kay was very clear. And that. lemon pound cake. Disgusting. I mean, do you think that this is a common experience? I think maybe if you're not cool with being PC, then sure, this might be common for you. Maybe, but like how many people walking or like I said, like, I think this is something you do like once in a lifetime. So like if you hadn't been there a million times to know that it should have been spare rib and apple cake because you just like it wasn't that deep for you and you were just going to see this show, you wouldn't know any different. You'd be like, mm, this corn is delicious. Pass the lemon pound cake. That is the key point right there, Chelsea. Is this ex- like what does it matter? Like it. What does it matter? Like, I don't understand. Is she like dining at medieval times? every week i guess the value here is that k is pointing out that there are changes to the experience it's no longer what it once was but to me i don't care i mean if i'm going it's like i'm going to bring my nephew like it doesn't matter like to it's like so it's not necessarily i I think i can crown this (laughs) okay let's crown it the queens are tabulating are you ready i think so I yeah. like I almost put up the five just to see Same. your reaction. Wait, really? Oh fi- no, no, no. I almost put 0. 0.5. Oh no, I was gonna put the five just for you to freak out. Oh, so my Chelsea God. and I both are holding up the one crown. I'm just yeah. gonna go quick here. Go. It, to me, it's sort of like medieval times is like stupid and like it's just frivolous entertainment for children and you eat a turkey leg. That's offensive to people that don't want to kill animals. So to sure. me, who cares? It's not an, a deep impact to me. I gave the one crown because I'm very clear. I do think it's stupid that they changed the spare rib to corn. That's not even the same <laughs> tier on a food pyramid. So for that reason, I gave it one crown. What about you? 
Yeah, similar. I mean, at least I know it's on the menu. That's that's really like the only beneficial thing I think that came out of this. I, I don't think it would keep me from going. I don't think the normal average Joe has this experience because I don't think there's that much pretense associated with a visit to medieval times. So for that reason, one crown. Great pick. Very entertaining. Like it was an entertaining conversation. Yes. Speaking of Queens though, Queens, princesses, Kings, wizards, knights, medieval, (laughs) turkey legs, corn, (laughs) spare rib, K. (laughs) Do you have someone that you want to induct today for? My Royal Highness. I would like to induct the magic eraser as my Royal Highness because that thing really can just do it all. It can get smudges out of your wall. If you get a scratch on your car, you can fix it with the magic eraser. When I was home, we had a bunch of scratches on the bottom of like one of my mom's pans. We used one of those magic eraser sheets. It came right out. I heard people are using magic erasers on their teeth for whitening. I do not recommend that. Do not do that yet. People say that it works, but don't do it. Just go and have your teeth whitened like a normal person. I don't think that's the magic eraser's fault. It definitely was not intended to be used that way. But the point is the magic eraser, it's just exactly what it says it is. It's magic. That magic eraser is really is magic. It's just magic. What about you, Trey? Do you have someone that you want to induct as your Royal Highness? So I am inducting a friend of mine named Charlene Light. Charlene Light is someone who lives in Los Angeles. She's a neighbor of yours, Chelsea. Oh, nice. And uh, we met many, many years ago. We used to have an ongoing Thursday lunch date for honestly four or five years. Wow. I'm inducting her because Charlene is a unicorn of a human being. She is a fearless coach. She is someone with which you can hire to help you break through fears in your life and do things that push the boundaries of what you think are possible in life. She took on this amazing task when she turned 40, where she did 40 fearless acts. And they ranged from going to try on a wedding dress at David's Bridal, even though she was not currently in a relationship because she had so much hang up about what that meant for her. She did another fearless act where she had to go and knock on every single door in her apartment building to meet her neighbors because in Manhattan, when she lived in New York, you know, you don't always know the people in your building. Yeah. Oh, she like was a busker on the subway and like sang because she's a brilliant musician as well. One of my other, I I know this is going long, but another favorite one of mine is that she wrote little love notes like on pieces of paper and she just handed them out to people in um, Union Square Park, I think. And what came up for her was like a beautiful cleansing of these things that we self-impose on ourselves that stop us. So she's a beautiful transcendent woman. She has an entire blog that goes through that entire process. She turned that into a coaching business. She's also a tremendous yoga teacher. She does amazing yoga retreats around the world. Wow! And she's also trained as a soul reader. It's like getting a tarot reading, except Charlene reads and picks up your soul's energy. And instead of telling you your future, she is able to see what it is that your higher, greater self is reflecting from your aura. It, it's so tremendous, amazing. She is just, a, I could not, I like, I'm gonna cry. Aww. She's such a wonderful human being. She means so much to me. And she also has a podcast called The Fearless Lady Podcast. You should listen. She is committed to making the world better. And she's definitely done that for me. And Charlene Light is my Royal Highness. I love her very much. Aww. I love that. I feel like Charlene Light is like the magic eraser of humans. Like you you got an issue. She's going to magic erase that out one way or another with all of her skills. It's very true. Reading the soul. So many things. That's great. So let's keep this regality flowing and read a royal review. Oh, yay. Let's do it. Baby, it's time for some royal reviews. Chelsea and I have been thoroughly overwhelmed by the support that we have been receiving for this podcast from all of you listeners. It's really been amazing. This Royal Review thing we thought would be every now and then. And we have been getting such an influx that it just is remarkable. So we want to share another one with you today from (laughs) a user on Apple Podcasts named Hammond Cheese 
sand witch. So it, it's it's Hammond, like a last name Hammond, but like a witch, like, oh, I'll get you my pretty yeah, witch. So <laughs> ham and cheese sandwich. Okay. And this is the review. Five stars, question mark, exclamation mark. Mm. Okay. So first of all, giving anything less than five stars on a review of people reviewing reviews would be strictly camp. Like, seriously, you care enough about reviews to listen to an entire podcast about them and then write one yourself, but are still upsought. <laughs> that, that's a credit to uh, the Jingle Bells, Barbara Streisand song. That your need for review-based content was not satisfied? Sorry, no. But let me also say that I refuse to make this a florid spewing of superlatives, lest T and C declare it quote-unquote suspect <laughs> for its all too positive, hit every note quality. All caps. Sorry, I liked it too much, y'all. <laughs> so fine. Here's some criticism. I patently <gasps> disagree with Trey Trey and Chels on multiple occasions. In fact, I disagreed so strongly that I found myself speaking my objections out loud and while wearing headphones, might I add, in a space where I was very much not alone. Tracy and Che... Okay, I'm stealing that. <laughs> Tracy and Che, I'll allow this rambunctious hilarity to continue as long as you promise never to review me. Oh, no. The people waiting in the podiatrist's office have heard enough from me already. P.S. All caps. Natalie Weiss. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel like I have, I know we're not allowed to review this review, but I have so many questions. Like I want to know what ham and cheese really disagreed with us on ham and cheese. If you're listening, leave us like a voicemail or something and let us know what, like what you disagreed with, because I'm always open to discourse and we're not always right. And I would love to know if you felt so passionately about something, what was it? I definitely think that Hammond Cheese Sandwich yeah. must leave us a voicemail. Please. I want to know who this is because they are a genius writer. Yeah. I also, I am obsessed with getting a five-star review that both compliments and- uh, And insults us. And insults, like in a great way. <laughs> but in a I also, sweet way, yeah. I hear the larger point is Me that too. they enjoy the content, even though they don't always agree, yeah. which is exactly what this whole podcast is about. So 100%. amazing, amazing review. Thank you so much for all of like the nicknames you gave us and how you referenced us. I don't know where you live. If you're in New York or LA, let us know. One of us will take you out for a drink or something. You seem fun. <laughs> Tracy and Che. I'm, I'm totally stealing that. All right. So if you listener want to be featured as one of our Royal reviews and you want to match Hammond cheese sandwich bar that they just totally raised the gauntlet, the gauntlet, this is medieval times, honey, and you better get that crown. So make sure you leave us a review right now. We made it super easy with a super cute hyperlink. Love the podcast.com slash the review Queens. And there's also a one click link in the show description. So it's easy peasy. We did it queen. Another round in the ear holes. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's so gross, but I realize that I keep gross. saying books, but that's not a book. It's not a book. Oratory delight. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you like what you heard, please tell a friend. If you didn't like what you heard, please tell an enemy. If you want to leave us a voicemail, better hit up that voicemail box, honey. One eight five zero review zero. Yeah, please. Hammond, we're waiting on your voicemail. So please leave us a voicemail. You can also follow us on all the socials at the Review Queens and I'm at Chelsea BD. And y'all know this, but I'm at Trey Gerald. That's two R's. Please become a member of the Royal Court by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash review that review. You can also watch live clips from every single recording session on YouTube right now. And remember, ignore the haters and you don't always have to agree with us. We don't always have to be unanimous all the time. You're still a queen. Gender non-specific queenies. Yep. Bye. Toodaloo. Review That Review is an independent podcast. Certain names have been redacted or changed to protect the guilty. Executive produced by Trey Gerald and Chelsea Don with editing and sound design by Trey Gerald. With voiceover talents by Ida Kaminsky, our cover art was designed by Logo Bora, and our theme song was written by Joe Kanozian and sung by Natalie Weiss.